What's up, guys? It's Justin from AmericanFreedomTribe.com, and you're listening to the American Freedom Tribe podcast. In today's episode, we have a few topics we're going to go through, pretty uh, important topics. Uh, real quickly, though, I want you guys to go to AFT, American Freedom Tribe, AFT. 1776.com and if you've ever gotten anything from us a sticker decal magnet hat t-shirt hoodie whatever if you ever purchase anything from American Freedom Tribe you can go right now to that website AFT1776.com and register for a free month of the 1776 club where we have all kinds of incredible content uh, bonus content free giveaways um, free the best deals, discounts, giveaways on all of our merch you're going to find anywhere. Like, It's just uh, an incredible space for getting free, if not incredibly discounted stuff. Better than you know some of our other past things that we've done. The deals and the giveaways here are more regular, more often, and much better in, in terms of you know how much you're going to save, all that stuff. But uh, the bonus content itself uh, is incredible. The patriotic resources, the monthly specials the uh, patriotic community all that stuff and more is in the 1776 club members only exclusive club as well as a free not free but a part of i keep saying free a part of the membership is a exclusive 1776 club newsletter sent to your doorstep every single month so an actual you know copy handing copy um, of the 1776 club newsletter updated every month sent to your doorstep and I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. So AFT1776.com is the place to go if you've ever gotten anything from us in the past. If you haven't, all you got to do is then purchase something. Obviously, it could be anything from the website, whatever. And then you can just get a free 30-day um, AFT, I'm sorry, 1776 Club membership. It's AFT1776.com. And it's called the 1776 Club. I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. But that said, let's dive right into the episode. So it looks like... So the main thing I want to talk about today is it looks like President Trump is going to be indicted yet again for another bogus, phony charge. Um, he himself is suggesting it that federal prosec federal charges are imminent. And that his lawyers have met with DOJ officials just a couple days ago. And it looks like charges are going to be coming down very soon. This one in particular happens to be over the um, Mar-a-Lago classified documents. Which is totally, you know, it's just, it's like beating a dead horse here. We keep saying the same things over and over again. Where there's two, it's a two-tiered justice system. We have two rules for Americans. Some Americans get the pass if you're Democratic, or if you're a Democrat, excuse me, and other Americans don't get the pass. If you're a patriot, you don't get the pass. If you're perhaps a, a rhino Republican, you might get the pass. But if you're a patriot, if you're a true conservative, you don't get the pass. And Trump doesn't get the pass. They hate this guy. He's at the top of the list of people that don't get the pass. So here he is with you know these classified documents even though he he declassified them and and cooperated with them when they wanted them them back and this and that it it's just totally bogus here he is with you know a couple boxes of of classified documents in Mar-a-Lago with with secret service at all times and you know top secret on top um level security and they're still trying to say that this guy was was you know doing something nefarious and 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 that he, you know, he stole the documents, even though every president before him has, has taken documents, classified or otherwise, back to their homes when they, when they left. Obama did the same thing. Clinton did the same thing. Both the Clintons did it, actually. Um, who else we got? Bush. I mean, the, every single one of these guys have done some type of thing similar, if not worse, than him. Never mind Joe Biden, who's sitting on 1,800 boxes and, you know, 1,850 boxes left them in in the back seat of his Corvette and there's some in Chinatown it, it, like he just like scattered these documents all over the place never mind the 33,000 emails that Hillary deleted you know they get the pass they they get to clearly break the law and actually do th and, and by the way when Biden had all these declass when when he had these classified documents he was a senator and a vice president he didn't actually have the presidential powers to declassify them or actually be in possession of them legally which Trump does 
So that's the big difference. Biden has these documents and gets the pass despite actually breaking the law of, of you know, being in possession of these, whereas Trump, because he was president, has specific powers to override whatever they're trying to charge him with when it comes to the classification of these documents. He actually you know, didn't break the law. Biden did clearly and had 1,800 boxes of these you know, documents, whereas Trump had like a couple dozen or a dozen and he's the one, yet he's the one who's being charged with this federal crime. It's, it's just absolutely unbelievable. And of course, they're, they're, you know, they're building other cases as well to go after Trump. The one in Georgia is another big one. And uh, the, the Fulton County DA is, is a, a woman named Fannie Willis is considering RICO and conspiracy charges against Trump over his, his efforts to challenge the 2020 election although you know any democrat can lose an election and then challenge them over and over again and talk about you know how there was so much fraud and this and that but when trump does it he's now trying to you know over overrule or overturn the results of the 2020 election despite the widespread fraud and um nefarious nature of the 2020 election and, and despite the fact that you know I, I've made a video on this covering all of the states that in all the fraud that took place and all the the many many things that went on the, the all the evidence is there they simply just didn't want to look at it they didn't even you know you couldn't even talk about looking at it that's how bad it was because they simply shut you down censored you so again when a democrat does it it's totally okay but when trump does it and simply makes a call asking Raffensperger to to Dude, look at the evidence. It's there. Like, like we all see the video of this woman and, you know, Shea Moss and I think Ruby. I always mix up their names. Some, some stupid name. Shea Moss and Ruby something. Um, and, and then another guy. But you see these people on camera. And then you have, you know, the 2000 Mules video. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza with, with the whole uh, 2000 Mules of, of people, you know, ballot harvesting and, and, and filling up the the ballot boxes with, with all these fake ballots. You have all this, and that was the tip of the iceberg, by the way, the, the, the 2000 Mules video. It was good, but it, it wasn't nearly, you know, the extent of what actually took place. But you have this video of these, of, of Shea Moss and, and Ruby something and this other guy, and they're literally, stu and, they're, and they're, they're taking ballots, like they have these hidden ballots under, basically, it wasn't, um, it wasn't actually a suitcase, it was some type of like box but it looked like a suitcase in the video and they're, they're pulling out this like hidden suitcase looking thing and all of a sudden 30,000 ballots pop up and they start, you know, pumping the machines over and over again with all these hidden ballots that just popped out of nowhere. And lo and behold, all those were Biden votes. They were all Biden ballots. And yet there's nothing going on there. So Trump on the call is literally asking Raffensperger, to, like, look at the video, look at the evidence, look at this, look at that. There's so many different things that we can tell that went wrong, all the election laws that weren't followed. And he's like, come on, dude, like, like, help me out here. You do the right thing. Like, you know, let's actually make this a fair election. We, we know we won, George. We know Biden didn't win. And here comes, you know, the weasel snake Raffensperger records the call and, fl and then all of a sudden it flips it around and says that Trump is, is trying to uh, overturn the election and that, you know, he, he's, he's somehow uh, participating in, in some type of, of RICO violation and conspiracy charges. It's, just, it's unbelievable. So here's the thing. We know they're going after Trump. We know that um, they're going to try to, to take him down before he can, before he can actually have a chance to be on the ballot facing whatever Democrat they want. And I still think it's probably going to end up being uh, Gavin Newsom, although some other names have been floated around for sure. And, you know, it could, it could be somebody else. But I'm, uh, my pick that, that I think that they're going to go with is Gavin Newsom. And by the way, on a side note, Robert F. Kennedy has been generating all kinds of, of incredible publicity for himself and, and is polling actually really well right now. But I said this from the very beginning. I said the man is absolutely brilliant. And he is. Um, I just, I, I know for a fact they're not going to let this guy win. He's literally, he might have a D in front of his name, but he is, he's a, he's a, a more well-spoken version of Trump. 
and not that he's better than Trump, but he's he's more articulate than Trump. And he he's totally not what the establishment wants. Again, he I, he, I still I, I prefer hundred percent. I prefer Trump over Kennedy. There's there's some things about Kennedy I don't like either. Uh, but he is well spoken. He, he actually is, is really smart when it comes to. So the the one of the things I don't like about what Trump does in his in his uh, speeches, and I talked about this with what he should have did in January sixth, or what really should have happened in, in one of the past podcasts. You know his rallies, all these things. He's an incredible. I mean, he's so entertaining. This guy is just like fun to watch. He's funny. He's witty. He's you know clever. He's he, he's funny to just watch, like entertaining to watch his manner. All these things. An unbelievable public speaker, but one of his weaknesses, I think, is the fact that he doesn't—he doesn't actually articulate himself well. Like it, he almost talks as if he doesn't know the numbers. Like he never uses facts. He never uses numbers, data. And in January six, particularly when we all, you know, heard over this, you know, come to to the cap, come to uh, Washington, and and you know, make your voices heard you know, peacefully and all this other stuff. And, you know, there's this big rally that was supposed to happen. It was like, all right, here's, you know, here's going to be the big, the big reveal where you're going to finally, you know, show all the evidence of fraud and, you know, how the election was stolen, this and that. And it was the same old thing. It was, you know, pumping up the crowd and, you know, saying cool stuff and being funny. And, but you didn't actually come with the facts. You didn't actually come with the data. You didn't come with the numbers. You didn't come with the video evidence. You didn't come with the testimonials. You didn't come with the affidavits. You didn't come with any of that stuff. And it was just another MAGA rally with, you know, a million or whatever people that showed up. It, again, it was cool, but in that moment, you needed to really deliver. You needed to show hard proof, and you just didn't do it. And that's one of my few criticisms of, of you know, how he speaks you know, publicly and, and whatnot, but because I think he's amazing. I think he's a naturally amazing, entertaining speaker. But I think he he cuts himself a little short by not just having a few numbers on hand. You know, just remember a couple things on the top of your head and and you know deliver them. Whereas Kennedy actually is a numbers guy. He's a data guy. He can you know cite different studies and different facts and you know throw key figures out. And he actually appears not that he is, but he appears to be much more. Uh, well informed in certain situations than Trump would be, but anyways, I'm you know getting off on a little side tangent. And it, it, in any event, Kennedy is not going to be the Democratic nomination, the Democrat nominee, because the establishment hates this guy. He's he. I mean, the, the CIA killed off his uncle for the exact same reason because he wasn't an establishment guy. You know, he went against the CIA and the deep state and all these nefarious players. Um, and Kennedy is, it's, to what I see, like, I don't fully trust Kennedy, to be honest, either. That's one of the reasons why I wouldn't vote for him. I do trust him more than all the other players out there, like way more than DeSantis. But I trust Trump the most out of all the candidates running, if that makes sense, because of what he's gone through in the past few years. The the level of of tarnishing his, his reputation and his name and all the things he's endured, I don't think you can fake that stuff. I don't think that a man can can be dragged through the mud that much and have to suffer this much in his own personal life for it to be a ruse for him to really be a part of you know the globalist and you know so there was you know, a lot of people saying that in the beginning oh he's just you know especially when he was running oh he's going to go soft on Hillary and um, you know he's all part he's just a, you know he's just another billionaire he's part of the crew and and they're just setting him up so he's one of these like. You know, he's basically like an inside, inside job guy where he's going to pretend to be, you know, this America first guy, but he's really just a globalist. And there was some talk of that, if you remember back in, you know, when he first started running, that he was that guy. But I think it's very clear now, six years later, seven years later, that having to go through what this guy has gone through in the media, you know, in, in his personal life with celebrities that he used to be friends with that now hate his guts, um with his businesses that have been, you know, attacked in so many ways, with his reputation that's been dragged through the mud, with all these indictments and, and you know, lawsuits and this and that. It's just one thing after another that this man has, has personally been attacked and suffered in that I think just makes it clear that he really is an America first guy. Because if, if all these people, the global establishment, was on his side, 
why would they be attacking him so much like that? It just further proves that he is a legitimate, genuine guy. And I do think the same thing most likely a applies to, to RFK Jr. just because of, of the way his name was dragged in the mud and, and all the attacks that went on him during the whole COVID thing where he was, you know, banned from Instagram and banned from TikTok and, you know, kicked off Twitter and, and you know, his reputation was, was dragged to the mud and, you know, his, um, a lot of the people in Hollywood just like didn't like him anymore. His, his wife's a, a famous actress you know, she was even kind of going against him because of all the dirt he was kind of bringing uh, to her name and, and the attention unwa unwarranted that uh, that they were getting for some of his beliefs and, and you know, anti-vax and this and that. So I, I do think that he is, I'm pretty confident that he is a good guy. He's one of, you know, the Patriots, despite the D in front of his name. But I don't have more confidence in him than I do Trump. Trump is still the guy. But with that said, um, let's get back on track real quick. And um, so the real question is, is, is they're trying to stop Trump. We know that. They're trying to stop him from being the guy that they pick, whoever it may be, Newsom, somebody else. The question is, like, like, what do we do about all this? What do we do? Do we just let this guy, the president, you know, continue to be indicted for, for bogus charges or... Um, to, you know, to con perhaps actually be thrown in jail at some point, or you know, what I actually think is going to happen, or what I think is what they're aiming to happen, what I think they're going after the establishment with with all these impending, you know, charges and indictments and this and that, and the stupid, you know, Fat Alvin case that's that's lingering as well. What I think they're actually going for is I think they're just going to put all kinds of pressure on him. They're going to have this. They have the Fat Alvin case in New York. They're going to come out with the Fed case with for Mar-a-Lago. The documents are going to come out with the Georgia one. I think there's another one. I can't think of right now, but I think there may be another one. So there's at least three. I think there's four, though. They're going to come out with like four, three to four indictments and just put all kinds of more pressure and, and stress on this guy within the next 18 months. And they're going to try to force him to uh, to concede even before... He makes it on stage, so that and and that's too probably why you see guys like you know Mike Pence running for president, and even DeSantis who is like forty points behind Trump. It's like, dude, why are you running for president? Like, you're a great governor, but you got no sh like literally no shot at beating Trump. I don't care what they say about oh yeah, you know. Um, I actually I don't really know what they're saying as far as as how he could possibly beat Trump. The people who are in DeSantis's camp, I don't really think they're entirely all there. I think that there's that there's some delusion there to actually think that there's any possible way that he can outperform Trump and you know beat him in the debates and and somehow turn around a forty point swing. When you know if you recall, he was the guy. Trump was the guy that, that turned around his election race back when he ran for governor when he was down by like 20 points or 30 points and losing to some other guy that nobody even knows. Um, but yet somehow DeSantis is now going to sw swing around and, and beat the master who put him on the state. It's like, there's just no way. He, it, DeSantis doesn't have the charisma. He's not as witty. He's not as clever. He's not as funny. He's not quite literally as... as smart as Trump is. Trump is, despite the way he talks, and you know, he talks like a regular American, which is why us regular Americans love him so much. Despite the way he talks, the man is brilliant. Like, like that's why I say RFK, although he may be more articulate, I don't think he's actually smarter than Trump. The, Trump does have some blind spots with, you know, the vax and this and that, you know, it's a different story. But Trump is brilliant. Don't, don't, uh, don't be fooled by the way he talks. The man is brilliant. He's a, he's a strategist. He knows what he's doing. He's tough. He's an attacker. And he knows how to win. And and DeSantis just isn't that. Like DeSantis is a great governor. He did some good things in uh during the COVID, you know, season for the, for a couple of years. He you know, he's still doing some good things in Florida, but he's not right now uh presidential and he's and he's not going to be presidential as long as Trump's running. But but here's the thing. So so you got guys like uh you got Nikki Hale, like come on, it, it, total joke. I think she's polling at 1% or something. You got um Larry Elder who I actually like. Elder's a good guy, but he's not going to win. He's got no chance. You got uh Mike Pence who hasn't officially declared, but he's going to declare in the next, you know, couple of days or so. 
uh, maybe a week or two at the most, but he's gonna he's gonna jump in there. And you got DeSantis who, jump, who just jumped in about a week ago. All these guys have absolutely no chance. Even Vivek uh, Rashwami, I think how you say his name. I, I actually kind of like him. I've seen a couple of clips of him. He seems pretty cool. I kind of like him. I don't really know too much about him, but I do like some of the things that he said. But the guy's got no chance right now. Maybe in the next, you know, cycle he can come around and, and he might do some things. But he's not going to beat Trump. The MAGA base is too strong. We know where this guy is. We know how he stands. We, we know what he can do. And we got our guy. But my point is, all these people throwing their hat in the ring, especially people like, like Mike Pence and Nikki Haley, the establishment, they're, they're backed by the establishment. These, these guys, these are the rhinos, the, the Pence's of the world, the Haley's of the world, perhaps even DeSantis, although I'm not quite at the level of calling him an establishment rhino yet, although it remains to be seen. But, but certainly Haley and, and certainly Pence and some of the others who have thrown their hat in the ring, they know something kind of that we don't know. Like for Pence to go out and, and announce that he's going to run for presidency at this moment in time, knowing that he has absolutely 0% chance of winning, just doesn't make any sense. What I think actually is that they, you know, these people in Washington, they talk, they know certain things. They know what the plan is for Trump. They have some idea. They might not know for, for certain. They may not be in on the plan, but they have an idea that if I stick around long enough, you know, in 12 months from now, uh, Trump's not going to be running anymore. So, you know, in, in that case, it's a totally different ballgame. Now you got, you know, DeSantis, who probably would be the front runner, but then all of a sudden Pence's name becomes more attractive be, simply because of, if Trump's not in it, it's like, okay, yeah, well, you know, Pence. Haley, Larry Elder actually, in my view, would be the best next thing to Trump. But but now it's like, okay, now the odds are, are evened out a little bit. Now everybody has you know, a decent chance. They go on stage, they perform well at a couple debates. Next thing you know, they're polling good. They might steal a couple, you know, get a couple wins, and who knows? It's anybody's game at that. If Trump removes himself from this, or if they force him to remove himself from this, it's anybody's game to win. And that's what I think these people know. I don't necessarily think they're in on it, but I do think they know something. I think it's telling to see guys like Pence throw his name in the hat, throw his hat in the ring, and actually declare to run, given at this point in time that he knows he has zero percent chance of winning. Literally zero percent chance. No one. Is, there's no way in hell that that an fair election, Pence is going to to beat Trump one on one. It just isn't going to happen. But that, but that's my point. I think these guys are going to pressure Trump. They're going to come out with three, four indictments on him, and they're going to try to make a deal with him. They're going to say, "Hey, if, you know, if you bow out, we'll drop all these indictments, and you can live happily ever after. We won't bother you anymore. And uh, you know, all these problems you got, we'll we'll make them go away. But you got to you got to bow out. You, you got to stop. That's what they're trying to do. I think it's becoming more clear." And that's really that's really uh, my best guess on on what's happening here. I think all these things are being. I mean, we know they're coordinated, but I think they're all being coordinated for that particular reason. I don't necessarily think they want to throw a former sitting president in jail, you know, for five, ten, twenty years, especially when the guy's about to be eighty years old in a couple of years. I don't think they want to. It's just a bad look for them. Is is is. Um, blatant and bold as they've become in the last few years, I don't think they're that bold quite yet. I don't think they're actually, they want the image of Trump being thrown in a jail cell to be associated with them. I don't think the Biden administration wants that. I don't think, you know, Obama's administration wants that. I don't think George Soros necessarily wants that and being linked to some of these people that are, you know, prosecuting him. All the, all the establishment people, the Clintons even, I don't think that they want that look. But I do think all these things are happening for the sole purpose of trying to get Trump to bow out. And the best way for them, in their eyes, to do it is to put as much possible pressure on this guy and threaten him with the fact that if you continue to run, if you, if you, if you want to play this game and, and become president again, you know, you're not going to. You're going to be thrown in jail. We're going to, you know, prosecute you on these ridiculous, bogus charges and actually make an example of you. 
and, and the and so here it goes back to the very beginning. What what are we going to do about this as you know Americans? Are we going to let this stand, or in my view, are we going to actually do something about it? Are we are we going to you know make our voices heard? Are we going to like this should be the number one topic of conversation. This and and the, and the actual integrity of the 2024 election. What we're doing to fix the 2024 election. Now, let me be very clear. Anything I'm saying right now is in a peaceful manner. When I say what are we going to do about this, I don't mean anything except peaceful, you know, protests or peaceful um, speech in terms of fixing what's happening. So. When I say, what are we going to do about this? I mean, what are we peacefully going to do to rectify these issues? Can we, can we, you know, reach out to our senators? Can we reach out to our congressmen? Can we reach out to our governors even? Can we reach out on social media to different people, to, to different groups? Can we, can we make our voices heard to actually put some pressure on uh, the people in charge, the, you know, the, the politicians, Democrats and Republicans alike to, to make sure that this thing doesn't happen. We can't allow these types of political persecutions and prosecutions to happen in America. We have to make a stand. And by making a stand, that means actually speaking up and demanding that the people that we elect to be, um, to, to, to listen to us, to actually follow what we want, we have to actually reach out to these people and tell them, demand them to not allow this to happen, to not just continue to let, you know, the people in Congress, our Republican rhinos, to just do nothing. I mean, Biden should have been impeached a year ago. He should have been impeached two years ago. He should have been impeached when when he, when McCarthy was appointed. The moment McCarthy was appointed, the first thing they should have did was impeach Biden. But we have so many rhinos up there who are do nothing Republicans. They literally just establishment do nothing over and over and over again, and nothing ever happens. Nothing ever changes. So when it comes to allowing Trump to, you know be dragged through the mud, to be persecuted, to be prosecuted for these bogus charges. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to continue to let these Republican rhinos do absolutely nothing and then let our guy, the guy that we actually really want to be our next president, are we going to, are, are we going to let him you know, just fall? Or are we going to stand up and peacefully, but, uh, but strongly, protest what's happening? Are we going to actually make our voices heard in a peaceful manner? but in an effective manner to make changes. And I think we have to do that. I think we have no choice because if Trump goes and he falls and he has to bow out because of all these political persecutions against him, it's all over. He really is our last, it, it, it's so cliche to say this, but it, it, it's like we're living in some type, some type of mo, a, a movie, like a, a story, like a, you know, a bad verse evil story, like a Lord of the Rings type of thing or a Harry Potter type of thing. But it's so cliche to say, but it's it's so it, it's true. It's like he really is our last hope for freedom, because if he goes, he drops out. All these other guys, they're 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 not going to do what he can do. They're not going to bring the type of change that he can bring if he gets in in twenty four. So I think the only solution is to not allow this to happen by making our voices heard, by demanding that our representatives, our politicians that we elect take a stand. And if these guys take a stand and these guys start, you know, like, like for instance, Comer and, um, Christopher Ray, like Comer's doing an incredible thing right now, going up against the FBI. He's, you know, he has the guts to take on the FBI, right? The head of the FBI right now. I've never seen this before. I don't know what's going to come of this, but it's, you know, it's, it's remarkable right now what's happening. I hope something good comes from it, but you never see that. You never see a politician actually, you know, go after the deep state guy who's in charge of everything, the FBI or anybody, you know, Comey got to walk away, Brennan got to walk away, all these guys got to commit these crimes and, you know, do whatever they want and just skate off into the sunset. But, so it's going to be very interesting to see what, what comes of this Christopher Ray thing and, and uh, um, his contempt of Congress right now. We're, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But in the meantime, I think we have to, to call our politicians. We have to make our voices heard. We have to speak out more on what's happening and what's you know been happening to Trump because if we allow them to continue to drag him through the mud persecute him and prosecute him for all these bogus charges it's all over I mean it, it really is all over and uh, yeah that's the question what are we gonna do the, what are we gonna do 
It's got to be peaceful. It's got to be lawful. But we have to stand up. We have to make our voices heard. We have to speak out against this injustice that's happening to the guy who sacrificed so much for us over the past six, seven years. Um, he really is America first, and we also have to be America first. In other news, real quick, uh, there's a transgender inmate in Minnesota who just got transferred to a women's prison, got surgery to transition over to try to become a woman, and also was awarded uh, $495,000 in, in a discrimination lawsuit. Unbelievable man going into a women's prison. This isn't the first time, by the way, that this is happening in America, but it actually is um, becoming more and more common that these male inmates, um, you know, all of a sudden can call themselves a woman. This uh, Christopher, no, Christina Lusk is uh, his new name, a uh, 57 year old man that is now uh, pretending to be a woman and is now uh, bunking up with other women in jail cells in uh, Minnesota. So, uh, yeah, it's great. It's, it's, uh, it's just uh, remarkable that, uh, and this is a, you know, pretty beefy looking man too. It's not like, you know, one of these fem, <laughs> it's not a, a, a feminine little uh, transgender woman. It's, it's a pretty beefy, tough looking dude who, uh, I mean, if he's trying to be a woman, he's not doing a good job. I don't think he's really fooling anyone with this look. And if he had the surgery, I think he has to sue the surgeon because they didn't do a good job. He looks, he looks, you know, more manly than most linebackers in the NFL. He's a beefy dude. So it's insane. Though. This guy is going to be, you know, sleeping with women. I, I, this is like a lot of guys' dreams. Like a lot of men would actually dream for this type of thing, of like you know, <laughs> being in the same cell as, as different women, and uh, taking showers with women and doing all kinds of, you know, ridiculous things that you that men shouldn't be doing with whole groups and and blocks full of women. This is this what this guy's gonna be doing now for the next uh, x amount of years in, in prison. I don't know. It's unbelievable though that this is even a thing and that they have to pay for it and. The surgery and this and that. There was a guy in Massachusetts a few years back too. It was a similar case. The state had to pay for the the gender transition surgery, and uh, I think he transferred to a women's prison as well. But it, it's just insane. There's there was other uh, examples as well of of males who switched over to uh, women's cells, women's prisons, and then they were impregnating a lot of these women in the prisons. And there was this like one guy in particular who was pretending to be a woman who knocked up like you know five or six different women in, in this one prison and it was this big scandal I think it was either a year or two ago you can look that up if you want but it, it's just unbelievably stupid it's just asinine at this point that this is even a thing and that you know the political correctness is actually uh, <laughs> putting these women in danger uh, by putting this this man in with them and, and, and uh, a beefy linebacker-esque man nonetheless and uh, the last thing I want to mention real quick in Chicago, the over the weekend there was uh, you should really look up this video. It's it's pretty insane. Uh, but Chicago was officially a war zone. If you guys haven't noticed in the past uh, couple of years, there's something like five, six hundred murders or something like that every year. You can look up the numbers; they vary every year, but it's it's insane. Like like it's 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 well above four. Hundred, probably well above 500 murders, and this is, we're talking like, you know, gang violence murders here. We're not talking like a school shooting, like they all the media always claims, like, oh yeah, these, you know, it's it's all the guns and you know these legal firearms uh, owners, you know, they they keep shooting up these schools, and it's like, yeah, th those are horrible things, but that's not how you get 500 murders in a city every single year. You don't get that from one guy, one crazy dude going and, and shooting up a church or a school again, which is a horrible, horrible thing, not to lessen that. But the media will only choose to, to um, showcase the mass shooting where like, you know, seven people were killed or, you know, 10 people were killed or whatever people were killed. And that's all they focus on is, is the people, you know, who legally had possession of a firearm. 
they don't like to focus on the four or five hundred murders every single year in every major city in America. Baltimore, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, LA, uh, Atlanta. Like, like, give or take four or five hundred murders every single year. And Chicago's the worst. It might even be, I think a couple of years ago, it was like six or seven hundred murders, maybe eight hundred murders in one year. Um, I think they're on track right now for like five hundred murders. And, um, it's just, it's, it's, it's insane. Like, again, not to, to lessen the mass shootings because that's a whole different problem. Um, that is something we, we, sh we should shore up and fix in certain ways, not the way that they tell us to, because all they just want to do is grab everybody's gun, all the legal firearm owners' guns. Um, we got to protect our second amendment. There's, there's different things we can do to fix that though, or to, um, uh, mitigate those types of things. And we sh definitely should focus on that. But in the meantime, like let's let's focus on the bigger problem, which is every major city is a war zone right now. 500 murders a year. You know, it, it's insane. Like we're talking about literally wartime numbers of deaths. And so if you look up this video in Chicago, there's a group of, of young kids. I'm talking like maybe 18 year olds. You can tell they're very young, 18, 17 year olds, maybe 20 at the most, but there's like four of them and they all run up to the sidewalk and they, you kind of don't know what they're doing. They all have hoods on and they run up to the sidewalk and kind of look over and all of a sudden one of them whips out this gun and it's got, um, what did it have? It, it's literally like a machine gun. It's, it's a Glock makeshift machine, makeshift machine gun because it has a Glock switch on it according to a New York Post expert uh, on, on guns and what they were shooting. But um, they end up shooting like 50 rounds. So they all have these, these guns, these like makeshift guns. And they just like, it's like, un it's like Al Capone type of stuff, like, like St. Valentine's Day massacre type of stuff. They just, you know, whip out the Tommy guns and just, they just start shooting up the whole block. And it's like 50 rounds go off in the matter of like five seconds. And this particular shooting left, um, a 14 year old boy dead and wounded three others and it's just like a, you know regular Saturday in, in Chicago and nobody talks about it. like the media doesn't even cover it but this is literally you're talking about like a dozen murders I think Memorial Day had a dozen or a couple dozen murders in Memorial Day weekend in Chicago this is a regular occurrence in Chicago it's a regular occurrence in Philadelphia and New York in Baltimore, in uh, LA, in Atlanta, all across the country, Houston, many of these of these um, Democrat-run cities are just failing. Detroit are just failing miserably, and it's all these policies. These, you know, Rudy Giuliani with the stop and frisk thing. They gave him a lot of of, of um, heat for that, but he cleaned up New York within just a couple of years. He cleaned up the crime in New York. Um, they call it the glass window policing or something like that. But it's like you're stopping the crime. And then now you got Fat Alvin Bragg and all these other guys, Eric Adams, just letting crime run rampant. And that's the difference when you have people like uh, like Neely, you know, who gets arrested 40-something times. And there's other, you know, they talk about other guys all the time, 100 arrests, 80 arrests, 120 arrests. The guys they just go in and out of jail, a revolving door. These put, these putting, they're putting these criminals back on the street. And these criminals have nothing to fear and they just go out and commit more crimes and the crimes get more and more egregious over time. And that's why you end up with war zones in this country. That's why you end up with four to 500 murders every single year in a city that used to be a nice city for many years. So it's sad, but that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We covered a lot. Make sure you go to AFT1776 to join the 1776 club and uh, get a free 30-day trial. If you've ever gotten anything from American Freedom Tribe in the past, stickers, decals, magnets, hats, hoodies, t-shirts, whatever, you can get a free 30-day um, trial of the 1776 Club. Get all the incredible bonus content, giveaways, exclusive deals not found anywhere else, and get our exclusive newsletter sent to your doorstep every single month. On top of all incredible other bonuses and, you know, stuff that uh, we can't even mention and uh, have time to talk about in this podcast episode. But AFT1776.com, make sure you just scroll to the bottom and register username and put in your info real quick, takes a couple seconds, and you get instant access 
to the 1776 Club. But that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Take care. God bless. And God bless America.